cannot imagine that they are going simply to say we are back to square one because square one is no longer there. There is more material. I've been reporting about this. There is more um, uh, um, activity. There are more centrifuges and more are being announced. Uh, so what happens with all this? This is, the, this is the question for them at the political level to decide. And then we can, uh, we can help. All right, joining me now from Washington, D.C. is Nekar Mortazavi. She's a journalist with The Independent and host of the Iran podcast. Nekar, great to see you there, and thank you for being with us. What are these talks right now hinging on? Well, uh, we know that the Biden administration won't be able to make any contacts with any foreign governments before they actually enter the White House. So within a month, we're going to see this change of administration here in Washington and this shift in foreign policy. The president-elect himself has mentioned at least twice um, on the record recently, once talking to The New York Times and once he wrote an op-ed for CNN saying, he intends to return back to the JCPOA. He hasn't really discussed the details of it, but it seems like the signal coming from the Biden team is they would like to make a return. And that's the same signal that we're seeing from Tehran, despite the um, various talks that surround uh, political circles in both capitals. I think both administrations are, are um, serious about uh, mutual return or compliance of the nuclear deal. Let me know if I have this correct. It seems that Iran wants the U.S. to drop sanctions and then it will comply with the deal. It sounds like the Biden administration is saying comply with the deal and then we'll drop the sanctions. What do you think the Biden administration's strategy will be when it comes to dealing with Tehran, given the fact that we saw the maximum pressure campaign from the Trump administration, which, you know, some critics would say didn't really do much. Well, the, as you said, the maximum pressure has, I would call it maximum failure because it's just been pressure for the sake of pressure or sanctions for the sake of sanctions. And it didn't result in a different deal. It didn't bring Iran back to the negotiating table. So Biden is definitely changing course. As far as the actual sequencing, I would say, of return to the deal, I think that both sides can agree on uh, an acceptable or mutual sequence. And I think that's what the IAEA chief is also alluding to as far as a return back to compliance. Iran is technically still in the deal. It just needs to go back to full compliance. The U.S. is out of the deal. It needs to return back to the deal, and that equals... Uh, removal of sanctions, how that it's going to be sequenced. I think that's something that both sides need to agree on uh, when time comes for a joint commission under the JCPOA. But I think it's very possible and it's definitely something that, uh, like I said, both sides are intending to do. We've reported, Negar, that in since 2018, when the U.S. pulled out, Iran's stockpile of rich uranium has grown to 12 times the limit set out in that deal. How hard would it be for Iran to roll back those nuclear gains? What would they need to do? Exactly, and what you're saying is basically another aspect of the lack of success of maximum pressure. Iran's nuclear uh, program hasn't been limited further, and it's, in fact, expanded. I think it, it comes to the science and the technicality of this and the logistics of how Iran can scale back um, this expansion. It's something that can be done fairly quickly, as Tehran is saying, within a matter of weeks even. And it's something that Iranian leaders have signaled they're prepared to do. They have specifically made these uh, violations of full compliance in a way that they're reversible. Basically, they haven't burned the bridges behind them because they intended to stay in the deal and not leave it. So I think it's something actually that the Europeans and the IAEA will have um, a lot of, um, can help basically with the logistics of Iran sequencing this uh, scaling back of the expansion of the nuclear program. All right, Negar Mortazavi, we really appreciate you adding your expertise to this. Thanks for that. <laughs>